Hi everyone, Aquila Cat here, also just Elise. The general gist, and I'll elaborate on this more, is that I have been dating this boy, Ian, for six and a half years. Uh, he moved to the other side of the country a year and a half ago, July 2019, and apparently he's been married since August 2019, but we've still been dating. And I had no idea he was married until last weekend. So, apparently I'm the other woman. But as far as I knew, we were in a very serious, committed relationship. We had talked about engagement, talked about marriage. And I had no idea that he was with this other woman. Um, although considering all the red flags that he dropped throughout the relationship, I probably should have. So, um, I do have an outline up, so you'll see me, like, glancing over on occasion, just to keep it streamlined and making sense and organized, because I know otherwise I'll start, and then I'll just go off on some tangent, and I'll never get back to the original thought. So, um, why I'm making this is partly to rant, and just get this all off my chest, because I'm pissed the fuck off, and... Also a little bit of a therapeutic exercise, I guess. And also just to give some advice to those who might be in this same kind of situation. Um, keep an eye out for things that I missed in your own relationships. So that hopefully you aren't stuck in one for at least a year and a half with someone who doesn't love you, apparently. Um, so a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm not... I'll use their first names because they're pretty common, but I'm not going to use their last names, and I'm, I'll am i explain some pictures and describe them, but I'm not going to post them up. As horrible as Ian is, and as much as he deserves whatever the fuck comes to him, I don't want to send people his way. He's already doing a damn fine job of ruining his own life. I don't need to add to that. Disclaimer, I know things are different in open relationships and polyamorous relationships, I completely respect that. I'm not that way. Like, when I date, it's to find a soulmate. One soulmate. And that's just how I am. So, relationship history. Um, how the relationship started. My roommate at the time uh, worked at the local subway. And Ian was a regular customer at the subway. He was working on getting his doctorate, and he would work on his dissertation at the subway so that his cat wouldn't get in the way throughout the day. Um, so he was there a lot. He um, got to know a lot of the people at the store, all the employees, including my roommate. And apparently subway would have these employee parties, like every other week or so. And they would switch up where they would have the parties at. And one week, we, they held it at our place. And she invited Ian to one of those parties. I found out later that um, she just realized one day that both of us were very similar in demeanor and mannerisms and stuff. And she thought we would get along great. So she and another friend of theirs at Subway like subtly tried getting us together. And I mean, it worked. But yeah, so I met him at one of those Subway employee parties. I remember not paying much attention to him at first. Like, we were playing some group games in a circle, card games or board games, I think, and there were a couple of times where he stole a few glances from me, and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Cute, I guess. And I think we talked a little bit, and then he found me on Facebook and friended me, and it's when he started, like, liking all of my posts and pictures that I'm like, oh, okay, he's interested in me. Um, but at the time, I wasn't really looking to date anyone. Um, I just kind of wanted to be on my own. So I was like, okay, whatever. And then we started chatting a little bit more. Um, and I started kind of liking him. And obviously he liked me. And that July 4th of 2014, uh, my roommate invited me out with her family to a July 4th thing by the river. And she... and. Um, I remember asking her, is Ian going to be there? And I remember her sly look. It's like she knew 
that we were going to get together. Um, but she said, yeah, he would be. And so I went there and he was there and we hung out and we talked. Um, and I remember trying to scare him away at that point. I said, so I'm asexual. Do you know what that means? And he said, yeah, I know what that means. And like, and I said, are you sure? Like, it means I'm not sexually attracted to anyone. I remember asking him like five times throughout that one day, like if he was okay with that, because I wanted to be sure. Um, and he said he was. So as much as I tried to scare him away, it didn't. So I thought, okay, well, maybe he's worth a shot then. And the next month in August, we started dating. I don't remember the exact day, but it was somewhere in there. And most of the time, we would go out to eat, like at Subways or Applebee's, whatever, um, once or twice a week-ish. And we kind of kept up that schedule because with both of us are a little introverted and also a little, like, independent. So if we didn't set specific dates for our date nights, then we would end up going, like, weeks without another date just because it would leave our minds and we would be busy with our lives and wouldn't like we needed to schedule it um so we started scheduling date nights once or twice a week and we just kept up that schedule for the rest of our relationship but when we started dating uh he was 33 and i was 25 and i remember he was very hesitant about the age gap i wasn't um, but he was hesitant because I was in my mid-twenties and I was around the age of the students that he taught in the col local colleges. And I had to remind him multiple times, like, I graduated college when I was 20, 20, 21, somewhere around there. Like, I've been out of school and I've been in the workforce for years. Like, I'm not a, I'm not one of your students. Like, I'm an adult. I've been in the workforce. I, I have a different mindset. And he eventually got used to that. It took him some time. Um, but because I knew that he was hesitant about that, when I started falling in love with him, it was about six months in. And I mulled it over for a while because this was the first time I had actually fallen in love. Like all my other relationships, they've fallen in love too fast and I was never able to catch up. So I was always the one to end the relationship. Um, but this was the first time that I fell first. And I didn't know what to expect or what it felt like. So it took a good month of thinking like, is this just a fleeting feeling? Or is this like actual love? And it was like I had fallen in love with him. Um, and so that Valentine's Day, I told him, I said, I love you. Um, but no pressure. Like, I know you're not there yet. And I don't want you to say it if you don't mean it. When you say it, if you say it, I want it to be real. And then he ended up admitting to me that he fell in love with me exactly a year later on that Valentine's Day. Um, it annoyed me that he waited an entire year, but it was also a little bit romantic to me. Um, so there was that. But he did say that he loved me. So because both of us are independent, and a little bit of introverts and stuff. Like, neither of us wanted to be dependent on each other. So, like, we were both pretty adamant about, like, having lives outside of each other. Like, we each had our friends. We had different interests and hobbies and, like, our own separate friend groups and everything. Like, I had my anime conventions and I had my LGBT friends who were mostly from Utah and the anime conventions. Um, and he had like his gamer groups for like D&D &D and board games and stuff and he had his like religious community he was Mormon um, and he also studied like religious religion and history so he knew pretty much the basics about every religion that he can find information on like knew enough about them to teach about them um, and he didn't have anime conventions, he had his religious conferences, like Coptic conferences and stuff. So that was his thing, and then I had my thing. So our friend groups never mixed, um, but I did try to include him in my friend group. Um, we had D&D, &D, and he was our DM for a while. So he met my friends, 
and hung out with my friends. And I, I asked a few times, like if I could be included even just once or twice on his gaming nights with his friends just so I could meet them. Like it didn't have to be a regular thing, like that was his thing and I had my thing, but I did want to meet his friends. Um, but I never did. We just never got around to it. Like, schedules never coordinated or what, like that's not what it was, but that's what it felt like. It just felt like it just never, like, worked out for me to be his friends. Um, obviously that was a red flag, uh, but yeah. So that was, this was the one good thing about him, was he never was controlling. Like, he never pushed me to do anything I didn't want to do. Like, I was the one to hold his hand first. Um, when he gave me my first kiss with him, um, like, he sort of gave it in a sneaky way as we were saying goodbye. And then he texted me, like, moments later saying, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry if that was too forward and stuff. I'm like, no, don't apologize for that. That was smooth. But I never felt, like, unsafe with him. Like, he was very comforting, very safe, very nice. Like, it felt nice to be with him. Um, but that's pretty much his only redeeming quality. Um, so about... About a year into our relationship, he finished up his dissertation. Um, and he dedicated it to me. Um, because of how supportive and understanding and loving I was, and it was just a really sweet gesture. Um, and then about two to three years in, I ended up going on a work retreat, and I got really, really drunk on that work retreat, and I just, like, blabbed to my coworkers about, one, how I was asexual, and... Too, I explained it in the way of, he's waiting until marriage, I could wait for forever and be fine. And they kind of laughed at that, but that is how I thought of it. Like, I, the entire relationship, honestly, I was a little worried because I am sex repulsed. And as time went on, and like I fell in love with him and he fell in love with me, um, I thought, well, maybe once we're married, since he's waiting until then, at that point, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a shot. And I can't guarantee anything after that, but I'll at least try it with him. Like, that's how much I fucking loved this guy. Um, so I guess that's the one relief of not being with him anymore, is I don't have to worry about trying sex. I can just stay all the way f away from that still, so that's good. Um, but I did have that concern throughout the years. Um, and the friend who set us up together, I remember like asking her about it. And she said, well, I talked to him about that a while ago, and he said that he would be perfectly happy in a relationship with you, even if you never had sex. And like that really comforted me and made me feel better. Um, I don't think Ian and I ever actually talked about that. I was going to wait until like we were actually engaged to discuss things of that nature. Um, in the future, if I ever date again, I'm going to be very upfront about that, that's for sure. But Because I don't want to go years being afraid of that. But anyway, um, also about two years in, that's when Ashley popped up. Um, I've never met her. I've never seen her. I didn't even know what she looked like until I found some things a few weeks ago. Like, he mentioned his friend Ashley and said that he was, they were like high school friends and she had suddenly dropped off the face of the earth when she married this guy she was with and she finally reached out to him, like ten years later, about two years into our relationship, and he's the one that she reached out to for help. I never thought badly about that. Um, I encouraged him to talk to her, and I, like, encouraged him to help her get out of that situation, because it genuinely sounded like a very bad abusive situation she was in, and so he did, like, over time, I don't remember how long exactly it took, but eventually, 
she divorced the guy. Um, they had to share custody, but she moved from Florida to North Carolina, where Ian's brother and sister-in-law lived. Um, because they were high school friends, she knew his family, and they liked her, and they wanted to help. So it took a lot of convincing and some time, but she did eventually move up there and started thriving, at least from what I heard from Ian, because all of this I heard from him, because I had no other point of contact in his family, and I'll mention that later, too. Um, but I don't even remember exactly what it was, whether it was just how often he talked about her, or if it was because on most of our date nights, um, at some point he would get up and say that Ashley's boys were video chatting him, and they wanted to say goodnight, and that they couldn't get to sleep without saying goodnight to him. And instead of just taking that call in front of me and me just like being quiet and letting him do his thing and then pres resuming our date after, he would get up and go to the bathroom to take those calls. And at first I thought it was like, oh, well, you know, he probably wants some privacy. And I mean, the kids don't know me. I mean, like, even if I'm just quiet and in the background and the camera's facing the opposite way, so they don't even know I'm there. Like, okay, fine. He he wants to make sure they have privacy, so he goes in there to talk to them, but I don't know, after a while, just something seemed odd and a little off to me. Um, so that's when I started getting suspicious about those two, and I asked him at one point, like, I didn't think he was cheating on me then, but I asked him, like, have you two ever had, like, romantic feelings for each other? Like, were you two like, maybe not now, but, like, together in the past. Like, are there lingering feelings there? And he assured me that, no, there had never been any romantic feelings between the two of them. Like, she was just a friend, and he was just helping her out. And he had gone out to Florida a couple of times to visit her, which wasn't that strange to me, because he liked to travel a lot. So he would frequently, throughout the year, like, travel to different areas of the country to hang out with various friends. So I thought, okay, fine. And I mean, she seems kind of the naive type, so she may not know exactly what to do or how to like, go through procedures to get things done, to do what she needs to do to get out of there. So he would go and visit on occasion. Um, I think he visited her like twice that year or something and stayed for a few days. And so it was understandable to me at the time how the kids thought of him as like a fatherly figure because their father very much so was not. Um, but he assured me that nothing was going on. And he has always been so bluntly honest, like to the point of being tactless sometimes. He was that blunt about his honesty. But as far as I knew, he had never lied to me about anything. So I had no reason to doubt him. I thought he was telling the truth. And so I pushed my worries aside, and I said, okay, I trust you, and that's that. Like, she's just a friend. Um, and that's what I continued to think throughout the rest of the relationship for the next, like, four, four and a half years, was that he was just helping her out because she was a friend. Obviously, that wasn't the case. About two to three years in, we started talking about some more serious things, like our future plans together and like kids and stuff. Like he didn't really care one way or the other about whether having kids on his own or adopting. I was very adamant from the get-go that I did not want children of my own. Like pregnancy terrifies me. I did not want children of my own. Like that was not something I was going to budge on and he was he was fine with that. And so we discussed adoption at some point. So that's kind of been in my mind since then. Of that's what we were going to do. Like, we were going to adopt a kid together, we were going to have a future and a life together. And so I started making all my plans around that. Late winter, early spring of 2019, we started seriously talking about, like, getting engaged and getting married. Um, he had told me before he was of, like, he came from a culture of, like, dating for a very long time and then getting engaged, and then getting married fairly shortly after that. So I thought, okay, no worries. Like, if I'm not having, like, if we're not worried about, like, my biological biological clock and, like, having kids of our own, then there's really no rush. Like, I'm, I'll wait until 
you feel ready to get married. Like, I'm, I was ready to be married within, like, three, four years of the relationship. Um, but I knew he wasn't yet. And just like how it was when I told him I fell in love, like, I let him know what I was feeling, what I wanted, and um, I just left it at the I'm willing to wait until you're ready for it. Um, but in late winter, early spring of 2019, we started seriously planning out and talking about engagement and marriage. Like, we were going to get engaged that summer, and then we were going to get married with sometime either during or before the following spring, which would have been spring 2020. Um, not long after, maybe a month, maybe two, uh, he told me that his mom was in late stage cancer and that she wasn't doing well and that his grandpa was in his mid nineties and he also wasn't doing well. And that because his mother was his grandpa's caretaker, um, they needed him to move out to North Carolina, like we're in Oregon. They needed him to move out all the way across to the other coast um, so he could help her and help his grandpa and just be there for his family. Um, we didn't know how long he was going to be out there. It was either until their health stabilized or until they passed. So it realistically could have been anywhere from a few months to a few years. We had no idea. Um... It hurt. It hurt a lot then. Um, I had never long distance dated before, and I didn't know if I could do it, um, but I told him I would try. Like, we had a solid foundation for about five years at that point, so it was worth it to try. Like, even if it was for a few years, like, it was my understanding that he was going to come back at some point, and we were going to get married, and then we could like, start our, like, future together. Um, so he moved early July of 2019, like, a couple of days before the 4th of July. It was really hard, um, for the first few weeks. And then I was kind of okay with it. Um, like, I didn't break down crying or anything, at least not until December 2019, when I was re-listening to um, the Adventure Zone Balance arc, and it got to the end of that arc with, like, the wedding scene, and the, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but, like, when one character dies and reunites with, like, that character's spouse, um... It just really hit me how much I missed him. And so I remember just um, sending a really long sappy text to him about how much I missed him. And um, he told me that he loved me and that he missed me and that he missed Oregon. And that he couldn't wait to be back with me. Uh, I'll go over it later, but when I was looking back through our text messages later, like, I remembered that we tried to set up video chats at first, and when I was remembering it, I'm like, why did we never do that? Like, did it just never work out? And when I looked through the text, I realized, no, I had frequently asked him, like, once a week or so, if we could video chat, and we had set dates for it. And it just kept getting rescheduled for, like, two full months. And when it obviously wasn't working, whether it was because of our schedules or because he was stressed out at settling down over there and um, helping his mom. And, like, in the past, like, it just, I just gave up. I stopped asking um, if we could video chat. So this entire, like, year and a half, I haven't seen his face. Um, we've only just texted. Like, neither of us like phone calls, so we didn't call each other. Um, but I had wanted a video chat with him at least on occasion, and he just kept rescheduling. And then I had to reschedule once when I was sick, and then it just never worked out. I just gave up on asking, because after two months it just wasn't working. And I thought it was just because he was stressed out after the move. Uh, his 
I remember from previous times of him visiting his family and him talking about his family. He explained that his mom was very demanding. Basically used him as an excuse to, like, for physical labor. Like, go do this for me, go do that for me. Like, I'm moving homes and I'm a hoarder, help me move everything there. Like, one story he told me was that when he got over there to help her move from North Carolina to Virginia, six months to a year, maybe, um where his mom decided to move from North Carolina to Virginia. And he was helping her do that, and like going back and forth, and she had him go get new toilets um, for the new house, or the old house, one of the houses. And, but she wouldn't pay for gas for him to do it, and he didn't really have a job. Because like here, he was a professor. He was teaching in the colleges here. And there, he couldn't find a like, steady, stable place to work. So I thought, okay, well, he's trying to find a job. He's dealing with his demanding mother and his, who's also sickly, and his sickly grandfather. And so he just, he probably just needs some time before we could video chat. Um, but it just never got to that. And that was another red flag that I should have noticed. But, you know, love lines. So, that was the other thing about three to four years into our relationship before he moved was I started to make some big decisions, like most of them getting his input on them. Like at one point, I decided I need to file for bankruptcy. So I said, I'm not, I can't do this anymore. I'm just going to file for bankruptcy. I'm just going to start with a clean slate. And I remember talking to him about that, getting his input on that. And I said, um, I think one of my points to make for me getting a bankruptcy. You know, if I get a bankruptcy and start with a clean slate, I won't be bringing a lot of debt into the marriage. And it'll only stay on my you know, credit report for like seven, eight years. And by then, like we'll be married. And by that time, probably wouldn't be ready to get a house until around that time anyway. So we wouldn't have to worry about any big loans or anything that that credit, the bankruptcy on my credit score would affect until then. Um, so I got his input on that and I got a bankruptcy and the other thing was my salpingectomy. I was able to talk one of my doctors into at least removing my fallopian tubes so I couldn't get pregnant. And I remember, I went about this one differently than the bankruptcy. I said, so Ian, this is what I'm thinking of doing. Um, I really want to do this and, um, like kind of, I want to get your opinion but I'm gonna do it regardless sort of thing. Like, it, like I want this done, so I'm gonna get it done. And he said, yeah, of course, like, it's up to you. Like, if we really want children of our own in the future, like, the ovaries will still be there, we could just do, like, not in vitro, because I'm not gonna get pregnant, but we could do surrogacy. So, like, there's ways that we could have our own children if we really wanted to in the future. So, yeah, that's fine. Like, it's up to you. It's your choice. Do it. And that just further cemented my thought at the time that uh, I picked the right guy, like he's being really great about this, and this is perfect, so I got that done. Um, and that was, yeah, that was July 19. I got the sopping act to be done a few weeks after he moved. Um, he wasn't there to help me with that, my mom was. So, so as far as behavior goes, while we were long distance dating, after everything a few weeks ago happened, I went through our text messages um, since around the time just before the move, um, just to scour through them and see if there were any hints, any red flags that I had missed that would have like given me a clue as to what was actually going on. And sure enough, there were a lot of clues that I I just either missed or... I thought weren't an issue because he said they weren't, or whatever, um, but I took some notes when I went through them. And I realized when I went through the text that it wasn't just Ashley that he talked about a lot, I realized that he, the only friends he ever really mentioned were, were other women friends. Um, 
like, he would update me about their lives and stuff, and his ex's lives, and updating me a whole lot about Ashley's lives, life and her kids. Like, I heard far more about Ashley and her two sons than I did about himself or his entire family, including his brother and sister-in-law and his own niece. Like, he hasn't mentioned his niece to me since October 2019. Like, I, I straight up forgot her name. I realized as I was looking back on my memories and looking through the text, I'm like, wait, he has a niece. When does he mention her and what was her name? So, like, it wasn't until I looked through the text again that I even remembered her name because he never mentioned her. Like, shortly after the move, he stopped updating me on his life and we stopped, like, legitimately talking to each other. And he ended up mostly just using me as a soundboard. Like, he would either rant about politics to me or rant about what was in the news or his work situation. Like the only time he would really talk about his family was when there was something bad going on and he was ranting about them and complaining about them. But boy did I hear all about how Ashley was doing and how great her boys were doing and all of that. It's another red flag I missed. It was in July and August of 2019 that I like kept asking about like, the Skype calls and, like, setting up video calls, and found out a few weeks ago that it was in August of 2019 that he got married to Ashley. So, he wasn't stressed about the move or about his demanding mother or her health or his grandpa's health or anything. No, he was busy planning a fucking wedding. Um, but after that, he talked far more about Ashley than anything else. I noticed when I read back through the texts. He also got really weirdly angry at one point in August of 2019. Because in August of 2019, that's also when I started training to be a CASA volunteer. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's Court Appointed Special Advocate Volunteer. I started training for that, and he was one of my references for it. And I had to send a form to all of my references for them to fill out, like, explaining why they think I would be a good fit for this. And my other references got theirs in pretty quickly, and my trainer told me that there was just one left, and it was Ian's. And so I reached out to him, and I said, hey, um, I need this form sent in as soon as you can. Like, they really need it, and I'm starting training soon, so if you could get that in as soon as possible, that would be great. Um... And I remember in my email to him, when I emailed him the form, I said, this is the address and this is the, like, trainer's email address, so you can send it there too. And a few days later, or like a week later, when I followed up with him, um, he got pissy, like, really frustrated and a little angry at, like, postage for mail and the fact that I was nagging him to send in a form that I really needed sent in. Um, and when he complained about the postage, I was like, he said he sent it off and he had to wait until he got money for postage and stuff and was complaining about his work situation again. And I said, well, here's her email. You could send it that way too. And I'll, if it's that big of an issue, I'll reimburse you for the postage. Like I'll send you a check and then some to help you out. It's fine. And so I did. Like, I reimbursed him for the postage, and it was fine. But, yeah, that was just a weird thing. Just the frustration. Like, I had never seen him be that, like, frustrated about something so minor before. And that was in August. Like, the same month that he had gotten married. Oh, that was the other thing. He didn't just talk about Ashley and the boys. He also sent me pictures of, like, the boys' artwork. And, like, was proud as heck of the boys. And... <sighs> And, you know, talking about them like he was their father. I don't know how I didn't see that part before. He would also constantly compare situations and other people to Ashley. Like, when I was reading over the text, I just realized that when he moved there, like, everything seemed to revolve around Ashley and the boys. Um, which was a little odd to me, to the point where I just started, like, ignoring whenever he talked about Ashley and the boys, for the most part, just because he talked about them so much. Um, he also said he had no friends there aside from Ashley and the boys, so I just expected that was why he talked about them 
all the time. In June, he mentioned that Ashley and the boys were now living in the country house. Um, before that, he had mentioned, like, that he was living at his mom's old house in the country, or in the countryside, and now he was saying, yeah, Ashley and the boys are now in the country, living out here in the country. Um, he didn't... Yeah, he didn't say in the country house. He said they were living out in the country. Like, out here in the country. Um, so it didn't strike me as odd then. Because later on he admitted that he had been splitting his time between Virginia and North Carolina. Between his mom's current house and, his old, and her old house in the country. And that Ashley and the boys had been living in his mom's old house. So he was living part-time with her since at least June 2020. The only time he actually asked how I was doing, or asked about me, without me bringing something up first, was in September 2020. And from what I found out a few weeks ago, that was probably about a month after the baby was born. So I think he might have been stressed and having a little regret or something, and was like, Oh man, I miss Elise, I'd, I want to talk to her and see how, he's, see how she's doing. Like, he actually seemed to care about me that month. Like, I had already felt us starting to get distant. Um, and September was the first month where he was actually showing that he cared and actually acting like how he was before the move. And it was a noticeable change that he cared about me. Um, and then after September, he started talking about Ashley and the boys again. Never mentioned that she had been pregnant. Never mentioned that she had had a baby. I had no idea about that part. I just heard about Ashley, and I heard about the boys. Around the end of October, there started to be a longer amount of time between our text messages. Like, normally we were pretty good about texting each other, like, every few days, maybe, like, once a week at the most, but pretty frequently. And, like, whenever one of us would text, the other was usually really good about tex texting the other back within, like, the next day or so. Um, so, little pauses here and there I was used to. Um, but around the end of October, those pauses started getting longer. And and then at the end of November, like, we talked to each other the day after Thanksgiving. And then I heard nothing else from him until the December 13th. So, you know, nearly a month. I heard nothing from him. Like, at first, I wasn't too worried. I just figured he got busy or something, or he was having phone issues, because that had happened a few times during some of the longer periods that we hadn't talked. And so I just occasionally sent him another message of an update from me, or just an article or two that I thought he'd be interested in, or just asking him how he was doing, and I never got a response. And uh, I'd have to look it up, but I think on like December 12th, um, December 11th or 12th, I finally asked, like, I don't know if you're having phone issues or if you're just really busy, but at least tell me that you're okay, that you're alive. Like, I'm getting really worried and concerned. And at that point, I realized, like, if something happened to him, I would have no way of knowing. Like, I hadn't talked to his family. I didn't know any of his friends. I had nobody to reach out to. To see if he was okay. So I legitimately thought that something bad had happened. He had been in an accident or something. And I googled his name. Like, I don't need the notes for any of this. Like, I googled his name. Thinking the worst that I might find, like, an obituary or some articles about a major accident or something. Instead, what I found was a baby registry. In both his and Ashley's names. With her using his last name. Um... When I first saw it, I was so concerned about his, like, life and well-being and just wanting to make sure he was alive that I didn't pay much attention to it. I'm like, that's weird, but he was probably just helping her out like he always does. Like, maybe it just required two names to be on there to set it up. Whatever. And then I finally heard from him. Like, I was just so relieved to hear from him, to hear that he was alive, that I completely forgot about the baby registry that I found for a while. It wasn't until... Like, the end of December, after Christmas, that it started nagging. That it started nagging at me again. And so I googled his name again. And I found the registry again. 
and I looked at it more closely and realized it's a fucking baby registry. Like, why the hell is his name on a baby registry? For, like, Target. What the... I mean, like, I guess he could have tried to be help her out, but it was still really weird. And, like, my heart... Like, I just started to get a really, really bad feeling. And I didn't want to believe it. I thought, this has to be a mistake. Like, this... This has to be the only weird thing. There can't be anything else. But I googled his name, to be sure. Because I had to be sure. And when I googled his name, um, I didn't find anything else when I googled his name. But I googled her name uh, with his last name. And I found a few more things. I found a random, like, lost and found dog notice on a local North Carolina, like, new community thing. And it had her email address on it. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Like, she's using his last name not just on a random website, but, like, in a community sense. That's strange. And then I found another thing that popped up was her employer's website. And they had pictures and names of everybody who worked there. Her picture and her name was there. And she was using his last name in a more official capacity on her employer's website. And I saw her picture, and she looked a lot like me. Like, different, of course. Like, different face, facial features, different face shape. She had freckles and was a natural redhead. I don't have freckles, and I dye my hair red. Have ever since junior high. But, like, we looked similar enough that it gave me pause. And at that point, my heart just started breaking. Like, I started crying, and I couldn't say... And I couldn't stop crying for like a half hour. Like I didn't even know what I was feeling. I wasn't really feeling anything yet. I was still trying to process it, but I couldn't stop crying. Like my, my body, my soul, like I knew. I knew what was going on before my mind really knew what was going on. And I was just crying for a half an hour. And then I think I started going through like the stages of grief for a relationship. Like, I denied it. I remember when I was looking it up, I'm like, no. There's no way he would do this to me. Like, it, it, this can't be right. It has to be something. There has to be some sort of excuse. And after a couple of hours of just crying and trying to process it and running it by a bunch of my friends and my family, like, I sent them the gist of what was going on and I sent them screenshots of the registry and the lost and found dog notice and her picture and name bio thing on the website and I asked everyone is this is this suspicious to you or am I making something out of nothing because I need your opinion on this because it feels like it's really really suspicious but I don't know if that's just me being paranoid and everybody told me no that's really suspicious like even my sister said like that's really suspicious and if it were me, I would not stay in that relationship. And I agreed with them. I'm like, you're all, like, you're all right. Like, that's what I needed to hear. Thank you. Like, I'm not making something out of nothing. Like, this is something. I don't know what the hell is going on, but it's something wrong. So after taking a few hours to, like, get second opinions from my friends and family and process it enough to calm down enough to actually send him a message. I confronted him about it. I um, might as well just bring up the actual text. I said, hey Ian, is there an Ashley in your family? Or did your family basically just adopt Ashley and the boys into your family to the point where she took on the last name? Like, I think I was in the bargaining stage here, and I was just trying to come up with any, any excuse as to why it was like this that made sense, that also made sense that he still loved me and that we were still in a committed relationship. Just something that had to make sense, because this couldn't be real. So I asked him if, like, or did your family basically adopt Ashley and the boys into your family to the point where she took on the last name? Maybe to distance herself from her past as much as possible, because it had been abusive. 
When I hadn't heard from you in a while and my mind was going to worst case scenarios, I looked up your name and among the professor-related results, there was also a baby registry for Ashley and Ian, last name. I thought it was odd, but brushed it off at the time, but it started nagging me again, so I looked it up again today. I thought maybe you were just helping her out, and Target required two names to be on the registry to get it set up. Spoiler, it doesn't. It only requires one name. So there's no reason why his name should have been on there. Unless, of course, it was his baby. Um, but then a few other things popped up in the searches, too. A missing, then found dog notice by Ashley, last name, and then a staff bio listing at school under the same name in the same state. So now my mind is spiraling a little bit. Are both of your names on the baby registry to just help her out? Did she just change her last name to last name because your family basically adopted her? Or is there something else going on? Like at that point I was just like, just tell me what's going on. I need to hear from you. I need to hear that this isn't, that what my, every fiber of my being is telling me that I'm not being cheated on. And he said, no, I understand perfectly. She's been adopted into our family, and we are always trying to help them out. Very vague there, and using the exact excuse that I provided. She didn't legally change her name, as far as I know, but ours is the name she goes by up here, and wherever it helps, she signs things as one of us. We offered to formally adopt the boys, too, somehow, but their father objected, and we didn't know how to do it, so that was that. <laughs> He never specified whether that was him trying to adopt the kids, or his mother, or both him and his mother, or something, but I was like, what the fuck? They aren't your kids, why are you trying to adopt them? Um, they still have split custody favoring him. I'm dividing my time between North Carolina and Virginia, trying to keep everyone up and above water. Not sure how much longer it can last, since I have to get a regular non-digital job with a much less flexible schedule. I might get a gig working with autistic kids again. We'll see who hires me. Ashley and the boys basically have my mom's old house now. A house in the countryside. His mom's old house that he was staying in. But I have to keep repairing things the boys break. Like being a building superintendent. Far more than that. Also, I trained one boy to take care of the chickens, but he decided he didn't want to do it, lied about it, and several starved or dehydrated to death due to his neglect. I wasn't there, so all I know is the condition they were in when I checked. Like, he's just going off about random things, completely avoiding the issue of my main concern, which is, what the hell is going on? Um... <sighs> He didn't even know any had died. He checked so infrequently, for which I was held responsible. So I'm in charge of the chickens again. Just whining and not, not trying to comfort me, not anything. Just, just making it about himself and his own issues or trying to distract me from the issue so that I feel sympathy for him, so that I comfort him. <laughs> So I'm in charge of the chickens again. Finally transported a bunch of them to my mother, which is good since she's a reliable caregiver. But I was hauling her food storage down the stairs to the basement when the basement stairs started to crack. She insisted it was fine, but when I was halfway back up the stairs, collapsed under me. Happy birthday to me. Didn't get hurt too badly, but it was a mess. Now the only way into her basement is via storm cellar doors, which can only be locked from inside. Like... The way he talks about his family and about Ashley and the boys. Like, if she saw how he spoke about her and her kids, I... Wow. My Christmas was half-hearted in the end. Nobody even wrapped the presents, and it was all political arguments. Got some good books, at least. Looks like $2,000 checks are happening anyway, which books are split on. Too much, too little, why the pork, etc. Let me know if all this goes through. I get good reception at my mom's place, but people claim the bad North Carolina reception is due to trees. The month before, uh, when he went without talking to me for an entire month he claimed that there were a lot of like military flight things going on and that it was interrupting everyone's phone signals and I was like mm, that doesn't sound quite right but okay I'm out buying chicken feed so hopefully this goes through especially since I lost my job I've been narcoticizing myself with chores and work I guess that's what non-alcoholics do 
I don't think I'll be able to calm down or stop feeling depressed until I have a job again. Too much of who I am is tied into working. Sorry I've been so taciturn. <laughs> My mind was just fucking boggled by all that. It took me a full 20 minutes to even respond because I was so fucking angry at him. Like he didn't try to comfort me at all and just say, oh my god, no, like that isn't, even something, just like, oh my god, no, like that isn't my baby, like she had a baby, but the father's not involved, and I just decided to help her out with this baby registry, just something, anything. I was literally asking for any possible excuse for why things were the way they were. And he just went off. So my only response was, so what about the baby registry? If Ashley is having a baby, why are you listed on the registry and the father isn't? Just straight up about it. And then I sent him a screenshot of the baby registry. He said, I didn't know what you were talking about, so I googled it. Ashley expecting was news to me. She hasn't been dating anyone I know of. He's really manipulative here. Like... After I found out what I found out afterwards, like, Ashley expecting was news to me. Of course it would be news, because she wasn't expecting any more. She had already had the baby. And she hasn't been dating anyone I know of, which is also true. She's not dating. She's married. To you. And it looked shorter than any baby wish list I've seen, so I thought it must have been a scam. But I reached out to Ashley, and she said it was her list, and she didn't think I would mind... I roll emoji. She said she was trying to get these coupons you can get from starting baby registries, but it didn't work because Target will only give you coupons if people buy a certain cash amount of things off your registry, which only works if they know there's a registry. She apparently made one for some shop in Florida too, but same problem. You only get the coupon slash deal if people buy from the list, which nobody did, because she didn't tell anyone because it wasn't real. It just existed to give access to the coupons, so it was a kind of scam, but not the kind I expected. I'd say it's impressively cunning if I didn't dislike having my name secretly used to get coupons. No mention at all about the baby. Like, he didn't say she wasn't having a baby. The only thing he said was, Ashley expecting was news to me. <laughs> and because she didn't tell anyone because it wasn't real. But he never came out and said there was no baby. So I responded, and I said, so she was just clueless about the coupon requirements and being thoughtless? That's understandable, but the whole thing is still odd. I know we haven't really talked about serious relationship topics since you moved, but maybe it's time we did. For me, I have been willing to wait, but also not being sure how long I can handle a long-distance relationship. We had a really strong foundation, and that certainly helped, but it doesn't seem as strong as it once was. And with this situation, I don't know what the full truth is. I want to believe you, but the bad feeling I've been having about this hasn't gone away with what you've said. Either you're lying, and my fears are correct, or I am being paranoid and am no longer able to trust your words, and it's a problem in my own head. But if that's the case, and everything is totally innocent, what happens the next time something strange happens and I get suspicious again? I don't want to be in a relationship where I can't, for whatever reason, 100% trust my partner. And I don't want to go about our lives together being suspicious. It's not a good feeling. So, regardless of what the truth of the matter is, I feel like it's in both of our best interests to end the relationship at this point. Even without me being suspicious, I don't feel like a long-distance relationship would be sustainable for much longer. I was making an excuse there. I'm like, you... You fucker, you cheated on me. I know you did. I just don't want to fight with you because I just want to be fucking done. So I said, where do you stand right now as far as our relationship goes? And he said, my guess is she was remembering doing the same thing in her pregnancies and thought it was making the list that got the coupons, not the purchases. And after that, we definitely need to talk. I don't know if that's how this year and I have made you feel. I can't see a future either. And I do understand because without trust, we are nothing. Fuck you. I just didn't realize I had let it get that bad. That stood out to me. I just didn't realize I had let it get that bad. Why did you let it get bad at all? What do you mean you let it? Like you knew something bad was happening and you just didn't do anything about it? 
Apparently I've been treating you the way I've been treating everyone lately and that's just unacceptable. I know it's my fault. I'm the one who moved, the one who has been inaccessible and withdrawn, but that plus opposite ends of the nation plus trust issues, I don't know how to get back from that. I'm not even sure when I can get back to Oregon anymore. I'm not even sure how to let people in anymore. So at this point I was just trying to wrap it up because the... Like, I had ended the relationship, it was done, I just wanted to be over with it. So instead of fighting and calling him out on his bullshit, I just said, It's not just you. I have also been isolating myself this year and resolved to just keep waiting instead of bringing up our relationship on occasion. This year has really done a number on everyone. Don't blame yourself for the move either. That might be how this started. But you moved for good reason, because your family needed you. Not knowing how long you would be gone has definitely worn me down over time, and the trust issues complicate things even more. I'm sorry, Ian. I really did want us to work out, but I agree. I don't see a way back to where we were either. And then I just talked about some comic books that I had for him and saying, I'll send them off in the mail to you, keep an eye out for them. And then when I sent them out, here's the receipt. And I just left it at that. So that's how it ended. Like at the time, I just thought that he had slept with her, he had cheated, he had a baby that he hadn't expected to get, and now he was kind of stuck. Um, but I didn't care if he was stuck in it. I'm like, you, that was your choice. Like, you made that choice. You're, you're a father now. Congratulations. Have fucking fun. Good luck. Um... I was really angry. I was so angry that um, if I ran to my friends and family about it and everything, and then I started thinking about ways to cope. And one of them was I I had had my eyes on this particular wedding ring, or not particularly wedding ring, but on this particular ring that I wanted for my wedding ring that I'd had my eyes on for the last three or four years. Like, it was beautiful, simple, elegant. I wanted that for my wedding ring. And, when, like, once this was over, I thought, you know what? Fuck him. I am going to make, I'm going to get that ring for myself. Like, I want that ring. It's not going to be a wedding ring anymore. It's going to be, like, a promise ring to myself. To remind myself of all this fucking bullshit that happened. And to just, I have myself. I'll love myself, I'll be devoted to myself. And I bought it. And I love it. It's a beautiful ring. I don't know if you can see it very well on here. But it's just simple. It's elegant. The Moldavite stone is a nice, lovely, kind of olivey green. And I wanted Moldavite because it's legitimately rare. Like, Diamonds are literally a dime a dozen. They're overrated. But space rock, that's cool. That's colorful. That's precious. So I bought the ring that I wanted for my wedding, and now it's mine. And now it's just a promise ring to myself. Um, a few years, a few hours after that, that's when I looked through the text. Realized he had been living with her since June. Realized all the red flags I had missed or just passed by. I was still really confused about what the truth was. But I knew it smelled like bullshit. And I knew I wanted nothing to do with that. I didn't want to be involved in that bullshit at all. Like, I, did, I don't know what the truth is, but I want no part of it. Um, what I really debated on, though, was reaching out to and contacting Ashley. Like, at first, I didn't want to. I'm like, well, they... I mean, they have a baby together. I don't want to ruin their relationship. I don't know. But she did deserve to know the truth. And after a few days, I realized if it were me in that situation, I, I would want to know that my spouse was, like, maybe not physically cheating on, because we had never had sex, weren't going to until we got married, um, but emotionally cheating on me. So I 
got her email address from the lost and found dog notice that I had originally found and I just sent her an email and I went through it a few times a few drafts ran it by a few people to make sure that it sounded okay because I didn't know if she knew of me or not and I didn't want to scare her away if she didn't know about me and if she was going to be just as confused and hurt at seeing this email as I was when I found the employee bio and the lost and found dog notice and the baby registry all together. Um, so I kept it very um, kind, very a little straightforward. I just said, hey, I don't know if you know about me or not, but I've been dating Ian, last name, for six and a half years. This is how it's been. We've continued to date after he moved to North Carolina. I thought we were still in a very committed, strong relationship. We had talked about engagement and marriage. Um, and then he stopped talking to me for a while and I got worried, so I looked up his name and I found the baby registry with your name on it. And then I found a few other things when I looked up your name. Um, and I confronted him about it and he danced around the issue like as bluntly honest as he's always been this is the first time that he's ever been vague with me about anything um, so I told her that and I said if I understand if you don't believe me um, and just in case you don't I am attaching pictures of the birthday and holiday cards some of them that he wrote me over the years where he professes his love to me and he like can't wait for our future together and just proof that we were in a strong committed relationship and that we loved each other and if you want to talk about this so that we can both get to the truth of the matter I'm more than happy to talk please reach out to me if you want um, if you did know about me and married him anyway and good luck to the both of you. I hope you two are happy, and I wish you the best of luck. Goodbye. I tried not to make it too accusatory, because I legitimately didn't know if she knew about me or not. And I didn't want to scare her away if she didn't know about me and ended up like needing emotional support and help, like she did when she originally got out of her other abusive relationship. Um, I never heard back. From that email. Um, I, I had checked my email every day since then, like even gone into my spam folder just in case it went there, keeping an eye out for it. But no response. Um, and then last weekend on Saturday, it started nagging at my brain again. I'm like, I still don't know what the full truth of this is. I want to know what the truth is. So I looked up her name with his last name, and I didn't find anything new. I just found the same old stuff that I found before. And then I realized when I was looking at the lost and found dog notice and the email that I sent her, her email. Maybe she used that as a username somewhere. So I looked up her email address alone without the actual at email part. And I found some more things. I found her Instagram, and I found her Facebook. Her Instagram was private, but her bio said that she was a mother to two boys and one, like, precious little princess or something like that. And there was a little, like, emote family at the bottom of her bio, including, and the man looked a whole lot like Ian. Pale, dark hair, a little bit of a scruffy beard. And then there was another emote of a little baby. So right then, I knew that, first of all, the baby was real. And that they were obviously involved, at least, since she was including a likeness of Ian as part of her family. And her little emotes. And I looked at her Facebook. A lot of that, I'm sure, is private, but there were some things that were public that I could see. One of those was a picture of her two boys and... A newborn baby girl 
from August of 2020. So, baby is definitely real. They have a baby together. And I also found a picture of a wedding, a wedding picture when they were kissing. She was all pretty with her hair done up and her pretty white dress with the stark white bouquet. And it was a side profile of both of them just kissing each other. Like I couldn't see the front of his face, but I could see his glasses. I could see like the shape of his beard. It was him. So. So that got rid of any doubt that I had. He wasn't only cheating on me, he'd been married since, according to when the picture was posted, August of 2019, a month after he moved. So for this entire, entire year and a half that we'd been dating long distance, he's been married while still dating me. He never broke it off. He never even hinted that he was in love with someone else, much less had a child. Like in all of the updates that he gave me about Ashley and the boys, he never mentioned a baby girl. He never mentioned a pregnancy. He never mentioned any of that. So I had no idea. And if I hadn't looked up her email, like the portion of her email and found her social medias, I wouldn't have known at all. So that... That hurt me even more. Because there was no doubt at that point. Like, I was 100% sure of what he did. And that was just so, so cruel for him to do. It was unfair to me. It was unfair to Ashley. Like, did she even know that he was dating me for a year and a half after their fucking marriage wedding? Like, what the fuck? Who fucking does that? So, I sent him a text that night, too, again, after a few hours, because I was too pissed off to do anything for a little while. I was so fucking livid. But I sent him a message. And I sent him screenshots of her Instagram showing the little emote family. And I sent a picture of the post of the wedding picture with the date and a close-up of like, hey, fucker, I know this is you. And I also sent him a screenshot of the picture with her three now, not two kids. And I said, okay, well, you might be good about staying off social media, but Ashley isn't. And he originally had a Facebook when I met him, but he deactivated it after a couple years, saying that he just for privacy reasons, and also because he just didn't want, like, his students finding him on social media. I couldn't find his brother or his sister-in-law on social media either, and I knew I wouldn't. Like, at this point, I can't trust anything he's told me ever, really, apparently. Um, but what he told me is that his brother worked for, like, special ops in the military, and he was strongly encouraged not to have a social media presence, and his wife was also strongly encouraged for that, too, to maintain secrecy for his missions and stuff. Um, so I couldn't find any of his family, really, on social media or anywhere else. But I said, so you might be good about staying off social media, but Ashley isn't. You weren't aware she was seeing anyone? You conveniently didn't address the baby when I asked you about the registry. How long did you intend to hide this from me, Ian? She was married a month after you moved, and her baby has been here since August. Both the wedding picture and the man in the family emote look like you. Looks like my suspicions were correct after all. I got no response from him to that. And then, about like 22 hours later, I texted him again. And I said, nothing to say to that, huh? Well, 
I don't know why you didn't just tell me the truth about why you were moving and break up with me instead of simultaneously being married and still dating me for a year and a half. You do realize that's fucked up, right? I guess the silver lining in all this for me is that most of what you've done recently is complain about your life over there. From the looks of it, you brought that all on yourself. Good luck, and may you stay as miserable as you've told me that you are. I hope you stay far away from me and I never step foot in Oregon again. So I just sent that as a final message, a final fuck you. I'll never send him anything else again. I never want to hear from him again. Never want to see his face again. I hate him. I hate him. Fuck him. But, um, <clears throat> Saturday night, when I sent him the first message, a little while later, I also sent Ashley a message very similar to the one on that I emailed her. Um, and I sent it to her Facebook Messenger and to her Instagram, just in case the email went to spam. Just in case he was playing her like he played me, I wanted to make sure that she saw the message somehow so she could at least make an informed decision of where she wanted to go from there. I haven't heard anything back from her either. Um, her Facebook message and Instagram message both show that she hasn't seen them, but at least for Facebook apparently you can see the messages. And if you just don't respond to it, they would have no idea. So that could always be the case. I don't know. Um, I may or may not ever hear from her, and that's fine. Um, I did my due diligence with making her aware of what kind of person her husband is and what situation she's been in for the last year and a half of being married to a spouse who's been dating somebody else at the same time. But I, like, the stress and the pain and everything was so bad last weekend that by Sunday morning, like, well, actually by late Saturday night, my whole body was aching. Like, all of my joints, all of them, were just aching like hell. And I didn't know why. Um, I mean, obviously, I assume, assumed it was from stress, and um, I've been worried about arthritis. It isn't that I got tested for it. I don't know what, but, um, so my whole body ached, and then on Sunday, it was still aching in the morning, and I made a post on Facebook about how things were so bad, my whole body was aching, and I just felt awful, and one of my friends reached out to me and said, it sounds like your body is in shock, like, you need to, like, take a hot shower stay in there for a while and like drink some soda something salty and carbonated like your body's going through a trauma response um i had just woken up from a nap when i saw that message and i was a little overheated in the blankets so i didn't take a shower but i did grab a soda and after a few hours that did seem to help and my body wasn't aching anymore but my soul that was another story um it just felt, and honestly still, um, that was Saturday that I found out that he was married, and now on Monday, well, almost Tuesday now, but, um, like, I feel like my soul is just an ember, like, it's not a fire, it's not a blaze like it normally is, I just can't, I just can't burn brightly right now. I'm not myself. Um, I'm sure that will pass in time. But for now, it's just hell. So, throughout all this, I'm just feeling a mix of anger, disgust. Like, how the fuck could you do this to me, to anyone? Like, you had it good with me. I was nothing but loving and supportive and caring. Like, I was willing to do almost everything for you. Like, except move with you to North Carolina because I have it too good here with my job and this is where my friends are. But I was willing to long distance. I was willing to try and have sex with you once we were married. <laughs> like, I loved you and you betrayed me. How the fuck could you? Um, also just disdain for him. Like, you're, like you're, the, you're the worst. You're a fucking monster. Um, it is empty and I feel 
foolish that I've been played for this fucking long. And even though the signs were there, I didn't see them. And also just heartbroken. Like, I, I was genuinely in love with him. I loved him. I wanted to spend my life with him. I... We had started planning our future together. And it just hurts a whole lot. Um, I do have a good support system, thankfully. I have wonderful friends. I have a great family. Everyone's really supportive. So I, I know I'm not alone. But I just feel so fucking empty inside now. I feel relieved that, relieved that we never commingled funds, that we never lived together, never started a family and adopted a kid. Like, we had stayed pretty separate when we dated. And at the time of the move, when he said he needed to move, I was like, you know what? Of all times, if this had to happen, now is the best time to do it. Like, before we're married, before we've intermingled our lives together so much to the point where it would be a struggle for me to survive without you financially or emotionally. Um, so I'm really relieved that at least we never got to that point and then I was betrayed. Um, like there's nothing to separate because we've been separated. Everything. Um, I'm also just really amused at Karma's a bitch. Because, like, mo ever since he moved, most of what he's talked about when he talks about himself is either complaining about his work situation, complaining about the world, or complaining about his general life in North Carolina and about his family and Ashley and the boys. Like, he hates it over there. And, like, part of me is so fucking petty right now that I am happy that he's miserable. I'm happy that he's miserable. I hope he stays miserable. He fucking deserves it. Fuck him. Um, and also, just why the hell... Like, why do people underestimate me so much? Like, this isn't the first time I've been underestimated and found the truth about something. Like, I'm, I'm a legal assistant. I, I work for a fucking law firm. I work with attorneys. Like, I'm no private investigator or anything, but, like, doing some basic investigation for our cases is what I do. I specialize in the discovery process for our divorce and custody matters. I'm used to finding information and knowing how to find things. So, of course, I was going to find out. Like, I'm surprised it took me this fucking long, but I found out. How long was he planning on keeping this from me? Years? Until I realized I couldn't date long distance anymore, even if everything else had been perfect. Like, what was the end game? And like, what would have happened if I had offered to move to North Carolina with him? Like, he got married the next month. Obviously, this wasn't planning for a little while. Like, most people don't just get married a month after deciding to. I... I don't know what he was thinking, what his plan was, what his end game was, like how he thought he could get away with this and for how long. Like it's just, it's just mind boggling and it's ridiculous and it's cruel of him to do. To both me and Ashley, honestly. I also feel a little bit of guilt. I know I shouldn't, but I do. Like a few times throughout all this, it has run through my mind of was it because I'm asexual? Like, was it because he knew I wouldn't put out? Or that even if I tried after we got married that it wouldn't, con it might not continue? Like, is it because of how the, the, because I am the way I am? Is it because of me? I know that's not it. I know it's not my fault. It's completely his fault. He's the one who cheated. He's the one who married somebody and continued to date somebody else without breaking it off. I don't know if he was just too fucking cowardly to do it or what, but it's his fault. Not mine. But I, those thoughts still cross my mind on occasion, you know? And that's the other thing, too. It's like, is it even worth trying to date again eventually once I feel that I even can? 
Like, I'm a sex-repulsed asexual. The pool of potential suitors is already pretty low. Sex is pretty important for most people. Um, I don't know. At this point, I'm just determined to stay single. Maybe one day I'll date again, but if I do, it won't be for quite a few years. And kind of like what I did with Ian, I'm gonna try to scare them away. I'm like, hey, I'm asexual. You know what that means, right? I'm sex-repulsed asexual. You know what that means, right? Like, I don't I don't want to have sex. I don't want to even... At this point, I don't even want to try. I, like, I'm gonna let them know what they're getting into as soon as they start showing interest. <laughs> because I don't want to date again. Dating is stressful. At least at the beginning. Like, I've been saying for the last few years, like, if it doesn't work out with Ian, it's not gonna work out with anybody. And I'm of that mindset right now. <laughs> so we'll see, but that's where I'm at right now. Um, so, like, my plans. One, it was making this video. I wanted to rant and get it all off my chest before I focused on healing and moving on as best as I fucking can. And also to give advice to others who might be in the same situation. Things to look out for in your own relationships so that you don't end up like I did. I don't want this on for anybody. This is awful. No one deserves this. The next plan is once it's safe to hang out with friends again, whenever that may be. I'm going to hang out with my friends, we're going to go to the beach, we're going to start a little bonfire, and I'm going to burn all of the birthday and holiday cards he ever wrote me. Just going to burn it all. Burn it all fucking down. Just get rid of him from my mind and my life forever with that. Um, as for what then? I don't know. Um, I had planned my life with him as part of it. Um, it's like adoption. I I don't know if I could raise a kid, doesn't matter if they're 5, 10, or a teenager when I adopt. I don't know if I can raise a kid on my own, and I don't know if I want to do that on my own. That's a lot. Like, I want to. I want to help. I want to help as much as I can, but I I don't know if I can do that anymore. At least not on my own. So we'll see what happens in the future with that. But that was my next major life plan, was after getting married, you're going to adopt. I don't know, the only plans I have after the pandemic passes are go to conventions, visit family, just the usual that I had already been doing both before and during my relationship with Ian. So advice. So the red flags that I did notice, um, with the first few dates, I did have to, like, specify the exclusivity, because he was already dating girls at the same time that he was dating me. But I thought we were on the same page about that. Like, we agreed to be exclusive with, and monogamous with each other. Obviously, he did not stick with that agreement. Um, but he didn't bother to tell me about it. <clears throat> Another potential red flag I noticed was his surprise at my confidence. Like, fairly early on, at one point he complimented me something about how beautiful I was, and I was like, I know, thank you. And he was like, I know I am, it's nice to hear it from others, though, thank you. Um, and he was just really surprised that I thought of myself as beautiful and was confident about that. Um... Not sure how big of a red flag that is, but it kind of seemed like one. I also noticed how he spoke about Ashley. Um, how often he talked about her, about the weird date calls that I suspected might be her that he was talking to. Not just the boys. And that he was talking about things that he obviously couldn't talk about in front of me. Because it would be suspicious and I would break up with him right then and there. Um... But I didn't want to be jealous. I didn't want to come across as a jealous girlfriend. And I wanted to believe that he was telling me the truth. Especially since he had been so bluntly honest about everything else in life. Like, to the point of being tactless. He was so honest. 
So I thought he was telling me the truth, that she was just a friend. Because why would he lie? He hasn't lied about anything else yet. Nothing else before he's lied about. After the move, I also noticed the lack of care toward me. Um, when he had been so caring and so loving and so sweet and attentive when we were, like, living in the same area and going on, like, in-person dates. Um, and also, all of, almost all of the dates were, like, at restaurants. I think, like, it took some nagging to convince him for us to have a date night at his place or at my place. I think we had date nights at my place maybe like three times and like twice at his and at the time I just thought it was because he liked his privacy or maybe you know he's he is Mormon apparently you can take the girl out of Utah but you can't escape the Mormons um but I thought it was just because he liked his privacy like he didn't want to be like alone and like unchaperoned I guess together um, before we got, like, engaged and married or something. So I just thought it was that. I didn't, like, I knew it was a little weird, but I didn't really think of it as a red flag at the time. And yeah, I did notice after the move that he only asked me how I was doing once, like, in September of 2020. And that he basically used me as a diary, like a soundboard to bounce things off of, rather than actually caring how I was or having, like, actual legit conversations. Um, and I also noticed the instant gut feeling of every fiber of my being telling me that I was being cheated on. As soon as I like brought up the registry that second time after I knew he was okay and after it had nagged at my mind a bit and I really saw it and realized, holy fuck, it's a baby registry. And then with the combination of seeing that and the employee bio and seeing how similar we, she and I looked. Like, that was really weird. That really gave me pause. But I did notice that instant gut-wrenching instinct of, I'm being cheated on. Like, he's betrayed me. Hard not to notice it when I cried for a half an hour after the feeling hit. Hard to deny that. Um... The red flags that I missed, that if, that you all should also keep an eye out for in your relationships, just in case, because you never know. I mean, I thought he was genuine and true for like the six and a half years we were together, but it turns out that at least for the last year and a half, he has not been. Again, I don't know the full truth. I don't know when his feelings started to stray, or if he was ever genuine about his love for me in the first place, and was just using me as like, I don't know, basically a toy to play with and have fun with and pass the time with until he could be with Ashley again. I don't know because he won't fucking tell me and be honest and because I haven't heard from her. So I don't know what her side is or how long this has been going on that I never spoke with or saw his family ever. Um, at first, I just figured it was because they were on the other side of the country, and, like, according to him, they were really demanding and always required that he visited them rather than any of them visiting him. So I just thought, oh, you know, the timing and locations d didn't work out for me to ever talk to them or meet them. He has met my family twice, like, in non-COVID times. Um, I would go out to Utah one summer to visit them, and then they would come up here the next summer to visit me. Like, we would just alternate years to visit each other. And whenever they came up here to visit, um, the two or three times since I moved up here, like, we all went to dinner together. Like, they met him, they spoke with him. He's met my family, I haven't met his. Same thing with friends. I never met any of his friends except for the mutual friends that we eventually made through Subway. Because um, we ended up being mutual friends with a lot of people who worked at Subway. I'm still friends with a lot of them. Um, so aside from them, and aside from when I included him in the D&D campaigns with a few of my other friends, 
He's met my friends. I never met any of his. I wanted to, but it never, again, it just never seemed to work out. So, um, keep that in mind. Make sure you meet your partner's friends and their family, if you can. Um, also, the red flag I missed that I only noticed after I looked through everything was he only ever talked about his women friends. Once or twice he mentioned a male friend, but he always talked about women that he knew or his exes. Like, I got updates on all of them. It, like, it didn't trigger any red flags or alarm bells at the time, but looking back on it now, I'm like, how? I really should have noticed that, huh? And the fact that he spoke of Ashley and the boys more than he spoke of his own family or even his own niece. Like, again, it's been over a year since he even mentioned his niece to me. But I heard all about Ashley and the boys. Also, the frustration and anger after he moved, like with the CASA referral form, and also just the general distancing of communication. Um like the extended times over time that it took for him to respond, the fact that I started a lot of the conversations, just things like that. So just keep an eye out for those things. Trust your gut, most of all. Always trust your instinct. If something tells you, if you, your gut tells you that something is off, it very likely is. Trust that. So... General advice, I guess, to wrap this up. First of all, to anybody who might be in the same situation that I found myself in, we can get through this. It's not our fault. It was theirs. It was the partner who cheated. It's their fault, not ours. And we can get through this. We'll come out of this stronger. We won't make the same mistakes again. We'll listen to our guts. We'll, we know more red flags to keep an eye out for. What we're not going to do is blame ourselves. I am especially right now saying that to future me, because I know what I'm like. Where after some time has passed, I'm going to start second-guessing myself. But future me, all of the evidence is there. You saw it. You kept it. All of the pictures. Um, what he said. All of it is there. You have the evidence. He did this. Like, he's married and has a baby now. It's not your fault. This is all on him. This is his doing, not yours. You just caught up and got caught up in it and he lied to you and refused to be honest and just break it off when he didn't love you anymore. So thank you. Um, if you have any questions, I guess, or if I failed to clarify something that I thought I did when I was going through this, let me know. I'll answer whatever I can below. Just let me know if you have any questions. I'll get back to regular videos eventually. I just really needed to get this out there. Bye.